I've reviewed the SpeedyB F7 version 2 stack before and used it successfully on a couple of builds. And besides being a fully featured flight controller stack, it's extremely convenient to use because you can just use the SpeedyB app to configure Betaflight or iNav wirelessly. And that's fantastic when the stack is buried deep inside a drone build and it's difficult to get a USB cable connected. And it's even better when you're out in the field pit tuning. Not only can you just land and then use your mobile to change all your config wirelessly using the app, you can read and analyze your black box logs and even flash different firmware versions. And now SpeedyB have released this updated version three of their F7 stack. The V2 version does so much already, but what does this new release offer? Let's find out. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. This is YouTube, you know what to do. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. SpeedyB have kindly sent me this brand new V3 F7 flight stack to have a look at. And I already have an idea what build I'm gonna use this in even before I've reviewed it. But for now, I thought I'd just do a first look review and see what new features they've added. And the first thing you notice when you open the box is just how awesome this thing looks. This ESC board, I mean, it's just so nice. It's, it's almost like a work of art, to be honest. It's got this really nice CNC'd heatsink on the top of the FETs with this dark blue anodizing and this white label text. It's, it's just very, very nice. And the flight controller, it looks like a fairly normal flight controller with all the usual solder pad connections. But then you turn it over and all those solder pads are duplicated with these JST connections. And if we look in the bottom of the box here, we've got a bag of wired connectors for cameras, VTX, DJI Air units, and so on. There's this is internet interconnect cable to go between the ESC board and the PCB for the flight controller. So no soldering involved there. And there's some additional soft mounts here and some mounting hardware. There's, well, these, these look like M3, M3 bolts for mounting the, the PCB stack. And then you've got this absolutely massive 1500 microfarad, 35 volt, low ESR noise suppression capacitor. Oh, and there's a wired XT60 in there as well. Now I'll run through all these connections in detail in a minute, but let's have a look at the specs and see what's new with this version three. So as you can see, it's a standard 30 by 30 mounting pattern, same as a original V2, V7 stack, but they beefed up the wireless comms. So you can flash the flight controller firmware and download your black box logs 33% faster. They've added these JST style connectors for DJI and CADEX, receiver, camera, VTX, GPS, and four LED strips. So there's no soldering needed on this PCB if you don't want to. Although all these connections are duplicated on the top of the board if you prefer to solder things. So looking at these connections in a bit more detail, and one thing I do like is the way they put this cutout in to make room for the camera if you put it up the front there. And you've got all your camera connections here for power and for video. And along the bottom, there's another UART. Uh, these are the connections here for motors five, six, seven, and eight, because this supports eight motors. And then along here are all your receiver connections. And there's some UART connections there as well. You've got uh, 4.5 volts here as well as 3.3 volts to cover everything. And down the bottom here are just a bunch more of, there's some Beck outputs here, and then you've got some more UARTs. I believe it's got five UARTs on here. And you've got connections down here dedicated to GPS. There's a, an additional 4.5 volts back on here, and that's designed specifically for GPS. And along the bottom here, these are the VTX and your DDI connections. 
Up the side, it's got these four LEDs that show you the state of your battery. So presumably that's 0 to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75 and 75 to 100, which is really nice. And let's turn this over. So this is where we've got all those solder pads duplicated. So that one's for your receiver. That's for your ESC connection to this board. There's a simple connection harness that you get in the box for that. That's for all your camera connections. This is for an LED strip and there's one, two, three, four of those. This connector here is for all the GPS connections, including the 4.5 volts. And down the bottom here is a connection to your VTX if you're using analog. And this one goes out to your Cadex Vista or your DJI Air unit. And using the SpeedyB app, you can now very quickly change motor direction for BlueJ ESC firmware as well as BL Heli 32 and BL Heli S that version 2 also provided. And this now supports eight motors, so it's a great choice for cine lifters, especially since the flight controller board has got a built in barometer and it's got an I2C bus for an external magnetometer. It doesn't seem to be an INAV target yet, but I've been assured this is coming very soon. Now, if we flip this over, here is a huge 512 meg of black box memory. 16 or 32 meg seems to be the norm on most flight controllers these days. So 512 meg is absolutely massive. I should be able to get, I don't know, 100 flights logs on this without having to clear it. I'd like to see other manufacturers copying this. And a few more really useful features which show that SpeedyB have been listening to what we want. It's got a built-in 9 volt back for the DJI Air Unit and the Cadex Vista, but for the Air Unit that's particularly important when you're powering from 6S. There's a 5 volt back for, well, whatever you want. And there's a 4.5 dedi sorry, 4.5 volt dedicated back for GPS. And this GPS pad is available when you plug the USB cable in. So you can do all your GPS config on the bench without needing to connect your main battery. And it's got the usual 3.5 volt back for a PPM receiver down here. The biggest physical change is on the 4-in-1 ESC PCB, which is impressive. It's got this CNC machined and anodized heatsink on the top. And SpeedyB claim this contributes to the real 50 amp continuous current output, even on 6S. And I've got no reason to disbelieve that. Heatsinks work. And this is the first time I've seen an ESC manufacturer including it on the board. And if you've watched my other build videos, you'll have seen that I always put a spike suppression diode across the battery input. These prevent the ball getting fried by voltage spikes from either plugging the battery in or spikes that are generated by the ESC itself. Now this here has got a built-in TVS protection diode. And this is a really sensible move by SpeedyB and I've only come across one other manufacturer that does this. And to complement that, they provide this massive 1500 microfarad 35 volt low ESR capacitor to keep electrical noise under control, which is all very impressive. And these ESCs will run at the higher 128 kilohertz PWM frequency that's been shown recently to be much more efficient and give up to 10% longer flight times. If you check out the product page, there's loads of very detailed info on the stack and the app and what they can do. There's full details of all the solder pads and plug connectors and a wiring diagram showing how to connect everything, including analog or digital video, GPS and so on. This has been flashed with Betaflight 4.3 using the SpeedyB F7 V3 target. Now, you're not going to find that as a selectable target for flashing in Betaflight configurator just yet. This is extremely new and the SpeedyB team have apparently submitted this to the Betaflight repo. Same goes for iNav, but it will be coming very, very soon. 
So let's put some power on this and see what happens. I've just got a standard five volt USB power pack. Let's connect some power onto this. It's all fired up, which is great. And if I hit the Bluetooth button, it's found the board. It's now connecting, initializing. Fantastic. And that's actually talking. See, it's moving there. If you look up here, you can see it's running beta flight 4.3 and it's the speedy B F7 V3 target. And as I said before, that's not a selectable target just at the moment, but that will be available in an upcoming release of beta flight. And if we look down here, we've got all the usual functionality, all your ports that you can set. You'll be familiar with this if you're used to using beta flight. Same is true for iNav. You can do the same with iNav. And if we look in the motors section down here, all the usual things. Plus, we've got this motor direction. And you get your warning. Make sure you get props off. Well, I haven't got anything connected, so it doesn't really make any difference. Continue. And then you can swap motors. You just hit the motor, tap it again, and say finish. Obviously, we're not connected up, so we can't do anything. But that's really useful. It's one of the common things when you first completed your build that one or more of the motors is turning in completely the wrong direction. This makes life so much easier. And this works for Blue Jay, BL Heli 32, and BL Heli S. Fantastic stuff. So there we have it. A very nice and very useful set of new features for this Speedy B F7 version 3. And they're marketing this as their flagship flight stack for very good reason. The price on this is $116, and that's about £95. And it's available for pre order today. We're at the end of June and we'll be shipping in about a week or so in early July 2022. And I'll leave links in the description where you can check out the latest prices. And availability. And I can't wait to get this into a build. It may even be another monster cine lifter build, not sure yet. And it's a real shame this is going to be buried inside a load of carbon and wires hidden from view. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found this helpful, why not subscribe or maybe buy me a coffee to support the channel? I'll see you next time.